So we're back. We've got, uh, we, we prepared the um, flaunts for the, the skirt hem. And now we're back and Jose's going to show us the pleating and he's going to do a lap dance for us today. So we're going down into his lap to do this because this is how he likes to do it. Everybody has their way. So explain it to them. You explained it to me what you're doing. Okay. Uh, the separation you want from one pleat to another will be half an inch. That means from this pleat the to the next pleat, it's half an inch. Right. The space. fold, the space. The um, folding, it's a quarter of an inch. The fold over is a quarter fold of over an inch. Is a quarter of an inch. Are you sure that looks like an eighth of an inch to me? I'm, I'm sorry, an eighth. An yes, eighth. yes. Okay. So that's an eighth of an inch. So I, I think you did something that I, I've never done before, which... Um, totally made sense, but um, you do a few of these um, uh, pleats and then you sew it rather than pin the whole thing and then um, try to sew it. So isn't that just easier way to control it? Yeah, you can just pin, make a few uh, pleats at a time. Like like here, you, you see about sew. 15, and then you sew. Yeah. And then uh, you continue on until keeps, you have it all, all done. Yeah, keeps it from being a mess. So uh, let's, let's sew that up, and then we have to show them the next technique that we do with this. So we're going to sew it, and you're sewing it right at the edge, aren't you? Yes, an eighth of an inch. And with these fabrics, it's really, really necessary that you... Um, uh, Based it right away. It keeps it from, um, you can really see the, the, the silk, the silk threads that go to make it. This is not an easy thing to do, so it's better to do this in short little clip, you know, uh, segments. segments. So now at this point, should we do some, some more pressing? Yes, we need to press this. I'm gonna remove the pins. I usually press three at a time, okay? Do you want to miss it at all, or do you think it's, we don't need I, to? I think uh, they can miss it if, if, they, if they like, but uh, I think I'm, I'm gonna go without it. Okay. Or you can do one pleat at a time. Yeah, I mean, you just have to get those in as, as nice as you could. I mean, you could if you wanted to, which they did in the 19th century, you could baste the, the ends of the pleats loosely together. And you see that a lot on particularly worth gowns. Um, but the original design that this is based on, they're all loose and they're actually not tight pleats. They're fairly fluid. And we're using a fairly hot iron for this. And if we have to, if we have to press it again, we'll do it. Yeah, we, we can do that after I um, continue with uh, what's next. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So Are we you ready for what's next? Yes, I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want you to show them what this material is. This is, uh, this is tarlatan. Tarlatan in a cut. 86 inches by one and a quarter. Okay. Okay. And that's going to make the hem for the uh, skirt. I watched a very interesting documentary uh, recently, and, and one of the topics was why didn't ladies trip in their skirts? And 
one of the explanations from the expert was that they had tarlatan in their skirt, which made their skirt stand out far enough that they wouldn't trip. Isn't that interesting? To, yeah, it makes sense. But this is a, a very um, uh, commonly used uh, material for the interior structure structure of dresses, dressmaking. Now, now it's used for uh, ball gowns and uh, wedding dresses. Hard to get. And you know, tarlatan is also used for cleaning machinery of um, like printing presses and things. And um, do yourself a favor. Don't try to save money by getting that tarlatan because it's, isn't it not nasty? Uh, <laughs> yes. It's nasty. You could only really use it for maybe um, hat making uh, that where it's really not gonna have any fabric near it. Are, did you need something, Lou? Do you need something, buddy? We'll get this pen and we'll have to probably have a break so that Lou can... Yep, we can take a break and um, then we'll show them. The okay, so we've got, it, we've got it pretty much all pinned and we will... Um, continue on? Can, continue in just a second. So we've got all of the ruffles sewn. Uh, we've got them pinned uh, to the tarlatan. So do you want to show them the other side of what we're going to do? So we've got the tarlatan on one side. This is what we're going to use to attach the ruffle to the gown. So we're going to just sew the tarlatan on. Um, it's a... I'm doing... Yeah, sorry. I'm doing big stitches here. Not yeah, we're big doing big stitches. Made of various things, but one of the things is made with this potato paste. And this is going to help give the garment shape. It's also going to give the uh, You just set, set the tarlatan on to the skirt. Pins. Okay, now you're going to trim all those little okay. uglies away. Now Jose's using the, the good scissors. For oh, this. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I forgot. Yeah, those <laughs> maybe your scissors. Yes. <laughs> well, he's now using. Hide them away from me, would you? He's using his good scissors, but of course, Tarleton is like. 
It's like that's room the scissors. Let yeah, me tell you. Yeah. Yes. So we 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 have to get our scissors. I'm telling you, if there's anyone out there that wants to get a gypsy cart and become a um, a, a scissor sharpener, I think they do really well. Just go around to all the tailor shops and all of the dry cleaners and any place that does alterations. And you come by here, we give we we'll keep, we'll keep you busy all afternoon. I see all that those little silk scraps and I put you know, my little parsimonious self is like thinking that could we could make something out of that. Okay. Okay. So next stage. Now look how nice that looks. Mm -hmm. Looks great. See, I'm bringing the seam up. The seam, you want your seam to be facing up, not down. I'm using my fingers because this tarlatan is, um, is, you know, it's got that ease and, um, just easy to do. Okay. And I'm gonna just go ahead and press it a little bit anyways, because I need to press this side as well, like a, an eighth of an inch. And then we create our, it's, uh, hem, it's basically like a little hem guard, but at the top. All right, so now we'll do our pressing. So you, we've got the, the seam is facing up. We are just pressing to the edge of, to, to, to the top of the, the pleats, the flaunts. And then you're gonna flip it. I'm going to do a little press in here too. And you're gonna press, that looks like about an eighth of an inch. I bet if we measured it, it would work out to be eighth of an inch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we do one more time, huh? Next. No, we don't need to do it. I'm just going to sew top stitch this. So we're going to just sew this down. So we're just using the same pink color thread, which is absolutely fine. So we'll get this sewed up, and then we'll be back for the next installment. So the flaunce has been prepared. Uh, Jose said um, it was like attacking a, a crocodile and he didn't know if he was gonna live through it, but he, he got it done. So the next thing is we're gonna start to see a dress happen. So th at this phase, I'm sorry, I just got hit with a pin. Uh -oh. oh no, it's uh, tape. Um, at this phase, we're going to put the ham in. Now we will do the front part on the doll. And then once we get that figured the way we want, we will then take it, take the doll off and then, so here it is. So we have to find the center and the center is gonna line up with this center seam is the center. So we're gonna put it there and then we're gonna 
just check as we go. And I have just for training purposes, I've, I've pinned the tabs up. That's not, they're not perfectly um, in the right place, done, the right place yet. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, remember this fabric has been been rolled up for 50 years, so it needs it needs some training. Okay, it's looking good. So really, it seems to me that right at the edge of our um, our tarlatan uh, binding. That is that is the placement for the front. Well, so shall we test the front and then see what it looks like? And then, I mean, it's it's popping out a little bit over here, but the toilet tent. Yeah, yeah. But but of course we can fix but that. I think the length is perfect. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take it off, take her out of uh, the dress off of her, and then the rest we're going to we're going to pin it because it, it it the length is not important now. Well, it's important, but we know that if it's off a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch, it's not going to be a big deal. I ha will have you know that Rosie, my machine has working, worked so hard today and through this project that she's shaken the uh, sawdust out of um, Lillian. So we're gonna pin that and um, we'll be right back. So we're back, we've got the fonts all pinned. Uh, we're getting to the end and we just had a little, cut off a little tiny bit, just about this much of an overage, which is really good for this, for this, because you know, you can, when you're pleating, you can just get one, just a little bit off, and then that causes, but it's better to have a little more. So we're gonna overlap the back, and then we're gonna pin it, and then we're gonna, we're gonna sew it. We may fold that one more time over in the inside. We're gonna match it up. Nice. Okay. So let's 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 display the whole gown standing up and see see how we did. And you can see how the tarlatan just helps make the gown. Um, it gives us the the. Um, the skirt a nice shape. Lillian's been dressed thousands of times, so don't don't worry that we're we're not roughing her up. She she can handle this. So I think that's that's once we get this in out. I think that's looking good. I've got a little bit here tucked in. I'll fix that up and see. Now remember we haven't turned our tabs up, so that's gonna change totally the way it looks. And once we get it all sewn on, we'll pet press it down. But I'm pleased with that. What do you think? Are you happy? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, absolutely. good. And then Leo's here with a question. What? What's the question? No, just show. Oh, you're gonna show? Okay. Let's look. Oh. Show everybody. <laughs> That's okay, isn't it? It's beautiful. That looks beautiful. Gee. That's beautiful. Yours is better. Yours is better than ours. Maybe we'll, we'll have a new job for you. Okay. okay. All right. So let's. That's okay. looking great. Okay, I'm gonna take it off because we're gonna okay, stitch we're gonna, it up. We're gonna stitch it up. So we're gonna stitch it up, and we're gonna we'll we'll be back. So we've got it pinned the way we like. Now Jose is going in and he is just attaching the ruffle. 
uh, when this is all done, that will be a, another layer of um, silk ribbon will be attached over that. So the inside is a, is a lovely, lovely garment. So we're gonna get that done and then we will be back. So we've got the, um, the, the flaunce, the, hem, the hemline on, pinned, sewn, and now we're just encasing the ribbon um, encasement. This is, you know, strictly a de decorative thing, but it's something that you'd find on any high fashion gown uh, of, the, of the era. And this, this of course, is, a, is not a doll dress. This is a miniature dress. While Jose is working on uh, finishing up the skirt, uh, I am going. I'm doing the um, pleating of the lace. He doesn't really like to do it. It kind of irritates him because he's so fast, and you have to do this fairly slowly. So what I've done to prepare the lace is I have lightly misted it, not so that it's too too um, damp. Um, we sell these, but you may already have one. This is the small, it's called a pretty pleater, and they're actually very hard to, to come by, but we do have, we do have some. Um, so what you do, now I have to tell you, anytime you start these, the starting point, which is right here, is the most irritating because it just seems to pop out. But you just work at it, and eventually, once you get past it, it's fairly easy and it's very therapeutic. Now these come with a little card that I tend to lose, so I've lost it. So I'm just using my little trusty um, ruler. And you just go in and you just press them in. Now if they pop up, you go back. You don't do this, you know, you don't you know, jam it in. So you just slowly work it. See, one popped up. I'm gonna just go back and put it back in. Now it's a good idea to always keep this a little slack. Now what you want to do is try to keep it as straight as possible. That's not the most important thing, but I think it just looks better if, if it, it, you'll get better results if it's straight. So we have to do, this is 10 inches. So the neckline needs two pieces of 10 inches and the sleeves, or the, the sleevelet needs um, um, six inches. So just to be safe, I'm doing the full 10 inches. And it's, it's doubled up and you can see it just once it kind of starts popping up, it, but you know, you just have to, oh, and this is causing me interference, so it doesn't hurt. Oops, I just knocked it all out. But you just go back and fit, put it all back in. This is why Jose doesn't like to do it, is it's, it, it's like, uh, what did you say? It's like working with a crocodile. And I'll just try to fix those a little bit. Keep it, keep it all in a, in a row. I mean, this is a really, in the 19th century, they had machines for this. They had uh, hand crank machines. And we have one, uh, but it's quite large. If we were doing reproduction gowns for ladies, it would work, but it doesn't work for dolls. And the little ones that they had were I think a lot of them have all been melted down for you know the two world war efforts. So anyways, this is what you're gonna do. And then what we're gonna do when we're, um, when I get this all done, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to mist it. And even though this is rubber, you can take an iron to it. So I'm gonna mist it with the iron. I'm gonna leave the iron on it really, really, really hot. And then I'm gonna wait, even though it's hard sometimes to, you know, you get impatient. I'm gonna let it sit overnight. 
and then tomorrow we'll do the application. Not with the iron on. Well, not with the iron on. <laughs> I'm going to wait till the... the I don't think it's that no, sturdy. No, I'm going to leave it overnight just once I've ironed. Yes, thank God. Thank David you. David is, David is just saved us from a lot of liability. So I'm going to press it down with the iron, hot iron, missed it, pressed it, let it and then I'm going to let it sit overnight. In the frame. In the frame. I'm not going to be impatient, like I've got to get it right on the dress. I think you'll get a better result if you do that. Okay, well, we'll see you on the next installment. So we're back, we've got the, the, the hem is looking very nice. That's all nicely finished. We're on to the lacing of the back, making the lace holes and um, the, the 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 lace around um, the the neckline and the the, the sleeves are are going to uh, cure overnight, and then we'll do that tomorrow. But right now we're going to do this part. So explain to them this. Okay, we have the trim that's going to go around the neckline. Okay, like so. I'm just going to place that as a measurement, uh, as a point of start, um, starting the as the starting the lacing. Because we'll put a little hook and eye at the top, uh, but this part we will below that we will below it like an eighth of an inch. You're going to mark the first. Um, you mark a dot there. I guess I have to do it like this. Do whatever which way I will. I will make it work. Okay, so we have the first um, dot there, our first mark. Then we're going to go ahead and mark every every half an inch. Okay. And you're just using a regular with a sharp pencil, and um, because that's gonna that's gonna be poked in anyways. So that's not gonna no show. One's, no one's gonna see that. And that way we, we, we have to know where the hole is exactly, or the dress will, will lace up wonky. good to me. So I have nine, nine, nine and more. it's about an eighth of an inch back from the edge. Mm -hmm. Well, it's okay. No, that's about an eighth. Okay, so now to poke this hole, there is a special uh, tool that's sold at the fabric stores, but the fabric stores, they don't have anything at the moment. So I'm, home, I'm going to improvise this by using my seam ripper. Which will work. Kind of like so, okay? And that's actually probably a good scale too, don't you think? Yes. For what we're doing. Next, well, I'm gonna poke again. And next I'm gonna use my clippers, just a tip, just to make this a little wider. Okay, and I guess that's good enough. So that's made a nice little hole. Mm -hmm. Going to begin from the bottom. All you're gonna do is just a, a simple stitch. Single thread. Leave a little bit up here. You don't need to make a, 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 a knot. Because this is basically a knot, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So you're going around. You're going around. I'm sorry, I got people. I got carried away watching them. You're going around and you're going through the loop, right? Yes. Okay. So this is the classic. Basically, it's a classic, classic buttonhole stitch. So I know this is very tiny and close, and if you can't see this, um, I'm sure you can find that on the internet. Buttonhole stitch. But you're doing this very, very tiny. It's gonna make, um, the hole is gonna get wider and I'll show you how, how to do that. Okay. 
almost like a buttonhole, but without making a knot, you know, right. just a single, uh, single stitch. Oh, 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 that's not the, hey, you, that's not your box. That's my box. Nobody gave you that box. Sorry. Fantastic. Ah. Okay, do a couple of those moves very, very slowly. Okay, the needle goes through the hole. Slowly. Slow motion. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hate that. Mm -hmm. It's okay. That is it, my friends. That's all you have to do. But you have to do that, oh. You have to do it 18 times. 18 times, so. So that's it, and. Oh, wait, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. No. Okay, there. I'm gonna go from underneath, finish it off. There you go. It's gonna take a lot to break through that. That's nice and strong. Okay, well, we'll okay, get, we'll from the top. Solved. Yeah, great. Hang on, hang on, we're not. Oh, oh geez. See, the hole gets a little wider by doing that with the clippers, okay? Just um, do it gently. Way. Yeah. And there's your. Excellent. Okay. All right. We'll get those done and we'll be back. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pin and tack down the tabs. So if you see on the, 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 the costume, all of the points get turned up. And so we're going to just tack them down in place. I'm sorry you're hearing a lot of snoring. Everybody's, it's nap time. That's, that's uh, Annabelle, she. So you just, you're just tacking them at the point. Yep, yeah, you don't want the threads sticking up and showing up. Mm. And you just nut it out. And go in there and clip it real close. Or like you do, you just pull it. Um, I, I, it wasn't my intention. The thread broke. Yes. But um, don't, just cut it with it. Okay, again, you pin it on the and right this, place that you like. Way, this, this big one is the center back. So that, that is a bigger <clears throat> uh, point. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to hide the nut down there? And just saw the very tip. You just do that over and over till you get it all done. Okay, they're all done. And uh, while while 
Jose's been waiting for me. He went and uh, did the, the inners of the armholes. So now the whole garment is completely, you have to fix these areas, which is where, what I did. So you'll Yeah, I'll fix that. that, I'll fix those. I, I, the reason they're, they're hanging up is I actually had some threads that were showing on the other side. So that's why they're doing this. Not that I'm that, that bad of a sewer. <laughs> So you'll fix those, but it's looking really good. So we're gonna be back with the next step. So I'm over with Leo, and Leo is working on the mini-me, the, the mini version of this that goes on the resin body. So let me see what you're doing. So you're going in and you're doing the armhole. You're doing those little tiny wee stitches. I'm talking because Leo's shy. Um, unless he's around a wig, then he's not shy. So you're getting those all put in. And let me see the other side. So that looks really, you did a really good job, Leo. This is, I think, the, the fiddliest part of the whole costume. Don't you think that's the hardest part, getting that right? Yes or no? Yeah, okay. So it's looking really good. All right, we'll be back. So we're back. We have let our uh, four yards of lace, we've let it dry overnight and just kind of get used to its new shape. Uh, so the next thing we're going to, we've already taken two pieces out, but we're going to show you the way to take it out, which is take it out one way very gently. If you get too rough, you'll pull your pleats right out. You can see it's coming out very nice. It's looking really good. It's important to let it cure for a, a while so don't don't think you can just iron it and then it's gonna work and give you the right look so we we're very happy with that aren't you happy with that the way it looks yes yes, yes. okay so we've got those two pieces that that Jose's pulling out those are those are gonna go on the sleeve and We're gonna first sew up the pieces that are gonna go, or those can go, we could start with those, and those can go on the neck, neckline. So what we're going to do is we're gonna sew the lace together, attaching it at the header, which the header is the, this piece right here. It's the very top, I don't know if I can get that close to it. It's, the, it's this little area here. So we're gonna sew, sew those two together because we want a fluffy look. We want it to be very, very fluffy. And we're going to put this basically like a running stitch, a running stitch between the two so that when we start to place it in the neckline, we can pull it. So we can manipulate it and pull it so we get a really, really good look. And this is a little fiddly work that you have to do in order to get this to work. And we're just using one thread. It looks like you're using your butterfly needle. Is that what you're using? Uh, no, I'm using the size 11, a okay. straw needle. Okay, the straw needle. Well, we'll sew that up and then we'll come back and we'll show you um, the next step. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get the cuffs prepared and we'll get this neckline prepared and then we will start the application. We're back. We, Jose's got all the lace um, sewn together. Look how beautifully it ruffled up. It's a wonderful little technique. And so now you're sewing it. Where are you sewing it? I'm sewing it to the neckline. Right on the edge. Right on the edge. The lace is looking down for now. Okay. So I'm just going to proceed and do stitches there. You're just doing a little overcast stitch. Yes. And how much of the lace did you use that we... I used two, two, um, two pieces that two were... Two strips. Two strips together. So that's probably two yards of lace because we've had four yards for this, and four yards fill this pleater, um, which is, I think, 10 inches long. Let me measure it. So it is, 
Yes, it's 10 inches long. So it takes quite a bit of lace to do this project. Okay, there it is. I'm going to leave it like that not for now. I'm going to attach the uh, the ones for the sleeves in. That was one strip that I folded in half, and then I gather it. So it's one strip that we had earlier in this, folded it in half, and then you sewed them together. Correct? Yes. And then we're going to attach this to the end of the cuff. Okay, we have here, we have it here, and this should measure three inches and a half. Okay, so Let's see, is it three inches? And it's a half? little longer. I'm Let's just going to pull it in a little, pull it in a little more and. You got okay. it. Okay. Did you snut it out? It curls up a little bit. Just be patient. I'm going to start from the, um, the seam from underneath the sleeve and I'm going to attach it right at the edge of the sleeve. And we don't have to, you know, you don't have to do your best stitches here because this is going to have another, it's going to have another full treatment. We'll get this on and then we will be back. So we're back. We've we were going to do the next step, which is preparing the swag. This is the uh, piece that's wrapped around the front to the side. Now it is lined with tarlatan. The original was lined with tarlatan, and it's very necessary that we put that there. Although this fan pocket piece goes in this section, it does not get tarlatan. So we're going to just ignore that. Right. So we'll ignore that. Now the swag is cut on the bias. If you do, if you just try to cut this on the straight, it will not wrap. It will not be, uh, work the way you want. So we're gonna cut this out of tarlatan and satin. So we're gonna have a little bit of cabbage on these pieces. So there'll be enough to, to do a little mignonette dress or maybe a little baby dress. I mean, we could definitely make something out of that, don't you think, Rosalie? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. A hat. Yep. I... Okay, so we've got that cut out, and we're going to cut out the pocket, because we will be heading in the, po the direction of the pocket shortly. The pocket is the two-tone pieces. So it has the, the ecru file, and the satin. And if you're doing it in blue, of course, it's the ecru in the blue. We're doing this in the coral and pink color because because Lillian doesn't need two two of the same dresses, the same color palette. So we'll get this cut out, and then we will be back. So we've cut the tarlatan and we've cut the, the silk for the swag. Um, so we are now going to encase it. And uh, so which of course means that we're, it doesn't matter which side you put the tarlatan in, but it really does matter what side you put the uh, satin. So um, put the tarlatan obviously on top of the finished edge of satin. So we're going to pin both of these and then we're going to encase it. And where are you going to leave, uh, where's going to be your opening for turning? Right this at the, at at the, the side. Uh, at the side. Yeah. So that'll be the side and it'll be the side that's on a 
a slant. There's a straight side and then there's a um, slanted side. And honestly, if I were designing this and Jose were designing it ourselves, we would have done this a little differently, but we're following the original design. So this is, we're doing it the way they did it. Okay, we'll be back and we'll have this all sewn up and then we'll show you the next step. So we're back, we're gonna sew this swag up. sewn up. And we're sewing it at a quarter of an inch. I mean, it doesn't really, you could do quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, it doesn't really matter. These are big pieces and um, they're going to get, they're going to get big. They can do big stitches too? Yeah, they could do big stitches yeah. if they want. No one is ever going to see it. Okay. Oh, I think it's the thread. It's not, it's not, uh, I can see the thread is down there. We got some bad thread. Well, we'll sew this up and then we will come back and we will do the next stage. So we're back and Jose has turned one swag and it looks very nice and we're about to turn the other. Um, so before I did that, I cut, uh, I trimmed the, um, the uh, seam. It was a quarter of an inch seam, but I trimmed it a little bit, like two and eighth. Okay, so I'm gonna slip my hand. This is a piece that you can get your hand and usually we don't have that. We usually have that luxury. And I'm sorry if I sometimes go off camera because Jose moves so fast I have to I have to be on my toes. <laughs> Just be yourself. They're used to it now. Oh okay. They can they can they can uh, stop freeze the, the their television. See now I'm sharpening the um you're the, the corners. You're the Paganini of sewing. Well, that's a compliment. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> you had to think about it, though, for a second. <laughs> okay, that's coming out really nice. You know, it's interesting. We uh, Both Jose and I agree that the people that made this, that did the design originally and manufactured it, they knew what they were doing. Because if you went to put this swag onto the, the gown, without the tarlatan, it would just be sliding all over the place. And look at the body it gives it. Show them, show them the body, I guess. And you're holding it, it's just, it just has a, just a wonderful feel that it wouldn't have without it. Okay, so I'm now I'm going to press this a little more and get this um, um, fold a little more um, in place. And I'm gonna do a running stitch along this smaller swag and the larger swag. Okay. Okay. And you're well. You're gonna close it up. I'm going to close a, it up and do a running. Pressing stitch. and then closing it up. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll be back for the for the application. So we're back and we are uh, we we're ready to we're ready to do this. We're ready to pleat this the, the swag. Okay, ladies, we have, and I'm gentlemen. going to make, ladies and gentlemen, I keep forgetting. I'm going to fold this, the top, almost an inch, okay? So I'm going to pin that.
Okay, I'm gonna face this up again, and I'm going to fold it again like so, and that will be a fold of one inch, okay? One inch, okay? So I'm gonna continue on with the pinning right at the very edge. Just about an eighth of an inch it looks, but it doesn't have to be exact, exact. And we're doing these um, just like the original was done. Okay, there's the first one. Now, we just keep doing that. Keep, keep on doing it. We have three quarters of an inch. And of course, that can get a little bigger um, if you pull it down a little bit like so. Well, still three quarters of an inch, okay? So, the next one, it will be Okay, I'm going to pin this right here, just to make sure that... You just that folded it in half. That's all you do. Okay. Okay, that's a good, good, um, that's pretty much, compare this width to this width right here. Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, all right. A quarter, three quarters of an inch. Yeah, just, just about, about, just about. Okay, maybe and a this, little, this a little more. This doesn't have anything to do with fit. This is, this is decoration, so. Mr. Louie, he's, he's trying to work us. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have cookies for you, Kevin. We were out of cookies, so if they're having a... They're not happy about that. Yeah. Okay. You just keep doing that. Keep on doing it. That's the last one you're going to do. So, okay, um, three quarters of an inch up here. We need to fold these three quarters of an inch. So, it'll be like so. That will give you another fold on the back of a three quarters of an inch. Okay. And we just go ahead and pin it. Beautiful. How pretty is it? That's Isn't pretty. It pretty. <clears throat> okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll continue. Okay. I'm going to do a top stitch right here. On the edge. Right on the edge. Looks like the cookies just came. And we've already done the same concept with the... Uh, this is the one. The top, which one's the top? The longest one is the one on the bottom, and the shortest one, the one on the top. top. Okay, yeah. forget it. Because a while ago we did this pattern. And you're going to do the same to the other side, too. I think I'm going to leave this by hand, uh, like that, not, not on the machine. And I'm going to do this by hand. Okay, yeah, that, that's all finished. So, we don't, yeah, why would we do that? Yeah, we just look how that. pretty that is. We don't need to okay. use the machine. So, we're going to press this and we will be back. So, we're back, and this is how we're going to treat the under pinning. You've just done basically like a little running stitch 
um, taking these ends and connecting it to the tarlatan. It looks like you're just you're just picking in the tarlatan, right? Yes, Correct? Okay. absolutely. So this is how we're going to finish this off. And then we will get this done, and then we're going to be ready for application. They gotta see this too, this oh, part. Yeah. Okay. okay. So when they do that, this side, this is what they do. Okay. That way, when you lay this um, swag on the dress, it's easier for you to um, place it on the right, on the right place. Um, okay, so this this one again just saw through the tarlatan, and that when you're done sewing that, you don't really have anything else to do to that edge. It's all ready to apply. ready to go. Yes, to be applied. So we've roughed that in and we're ready to, we'll, we'll uh, get this finished up and we'll be back. So we're back and we've got the swag looking very nice. Now we're going to place it. Uh, on the one side, it should come down to the tip or even slightly overlap the top of the tip. I'm oh, sorry, she's, she's kind of slumping. So let's get that a little lower, Jose, just a okay. smidge lower where it's almost covering that piece. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Maybe up just a, a little tiny higher. This is, this is all, you can do what you want, but we're kind of going by what the original, how the original was. Okay, that looks good. All right. So we're going to go around. We just have to pin it. We might have to redo it all. But now, see, it's laying nice. That's why this has to be done on the bias with the tarlatan. Otherwise, it would be a nightmare. OK, oh, that's good. snip we have to do on the end. That's good. And then there's, this is the side that has the fan pocket, so, and the fan pocket and streamers. So I think we're, we're really good here. So the next is the second. And that one, I'm going to start from this side. Do you need me to help you with her? Would you please? With her. Marsh, just don't stay. And so it's just about where the tummy is. So there you go. That looks pretty good. By the way, the side got folded, pressed. Press folded, okay? Okay. No reason to sew it, because we're going to sew it down in a moment. Okay, now we'll place it on the other side. I think it could go back a little bit. Because there seems to be, yeah, yeah. there seems to okay. be a lot of swag on this side, way more than there should be. We need. This is not something that is in a, a, a pattern. This is a freeform thing, so you have to feel where it feels right. That's where you put it. There we go. Now that's good. 
I'm gonna do a little, little fold over. Perfect. All right, I think we've got that. So now we're gonna we're gonna sew this down, and we will be back to do the next step. So we are back. We are in our our uh, set. We we we. Uh, the other day we got kicked out of it, but now they've now they've let us come back. So how do you feel? Are you ready for this? Yeah, let's let's do it. <laughs> let's get it done. Okay, let's yeah. get it done. So we're gonna we're gonna apply the trim to the neckline and to the cuffs. We've already got one kind of in place. So let's do the neckline. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to curve the trim. We need it slightly curved, especially for around here. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, how to do it uh, with the iron. Okay. Okay. So let's go over here. Okay, we have the trim over here. See the um, see the way it's facing the um, the thinnest um, side of the um, salmon uh, top. Okay, this is the top. This is excuse me. This is the top bottom. So top should be towards towards you. Okay, so so that's the top. Yes. So this is basically how it's going to go on, on the. Um, Start curving it with your hands. Now this is all cut on the bias. So it's See? very spongy. Yes. Which is great. It's just like Blast. butter. You can um, do anything. And on the other side, I'm going to do it from the underneath part. So. Um, Students, if you ever wondered how they did this on 1860s dresses and 70s dresses, where they could get these shapes, this is the technique. Not many people know how to do this, but you do now, you just learned. Okay. So, I mean, if you look at it, it's almost really in the position to the position. go onto the yes. garment. Okay. So you're just doing probably what, like a, a maybe three inches. Um, sorry, I'm sorry. One about a quarter of an inch over the the edge. Yes, that way it will hold the uh, lace in place. Okay, so now here we got our. A corner here. Okay, this is a real live working place, so the phone rings. Um, sometimes we try to put it to sleep, but David's here working and everyone else is working. Okay, now the uh, tricky, the tricky corner, it's over here. Why? Because I'm gonna have to, it's going to be slightly hard to do the, um, what do you call this lady? Miter. The miter. Okay. okay, so let's see. Yeah, it's easy to miter one way. It's when you have to go the other Miter way. the other way is a little tricky. So, okay, this is what I usually do. Okay, this is this fold is going that way. So I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna go, the same, which that's wrong, okay? You don't wanna do that. Hold that in place. Once you have that done, hold it in place. And what you do is just flip this side from underneath, like like this. That's called Kung Fu folding. It's like a, ch a, a, a um, it's sneaky, but it absolutely works. Okay, one more time. So you fold it. The wrong way. The wrong way. Mm -hmm. And then you use... Also, be, you use a pin. You can use a pin, absolutely, to hold that in, in place. Okay, do you see how that was? Okay, it's facing the wrong way. So, use this part from right here. Just Back. bring... Turn it... Yeah, just... You just, just did a 
of, of flipped around. This is all done on the bias, so this is actually pretty pliable, don't you think? Yes. I mean, I was playing with it before we started, and it was very, it's very like a, a rubber band, practically. Now I did notice something that we've gonna, we're gonna have to do, it, which is we didn't top stitch uh, the edge, but you know, maybe we don't have to do this. So um, students, this little edge right here, we should have did a top stitch. But now that I'm looking at it, I don't wanna mess that up because it looks so great. So you can, you don't have to do it, but you can do it. The original had a, a top stitching right at the very, very edge. You know, sometimes we forget. You know, when, yeah, it's the, uh, yeah. the, the first prototype of Forget Me Not, um, we did that. This one we were just busy filming, so we didn't. Okay, I'm gonna do it the right way. Um, this is where I started, and I left like a quarter of an inch hanging out from the side, and I'm just going to fo mark that fold there, and just go from the top. On the right side. On the right side, okay. Okay, I'm gonna go on the other side, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I probably have too much hanging yeah, here. Let's, let's trim, that a little trim a little bit. And if you make this trim following our instructions, you know, the amount that you need, you're going to have a little leftover. So you can, you can. Um, I mean, if you wanted to use it as a for a hair ornament or um, to use for the shoes for for bows. You, you've got enough. This fabric is so fine, you know, it's hard to... It's not as, it's, you've gotta be, you gotta be pretty tough for that. So that's looking good. I think I'm looking at it two ways. I'm looking at it in life and in the, um, I think we need to spread this out a little more. Okay. I think we just have, uh, just spread it out a little more. Smidgy. And again, this is the fiddly stuff that you all can, you, the, the, you know, it's not on the pattern, where to place it, you just have to fit this to, I, yeah, that's the, I think. Is that's that better? better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think so. It yeah. appears smaller on camera, by the way, than it is in life. But, um, you know, this is couture, so you do it to the client, what the client wants. And then eventually, we might do, we might in the um, the sleeve, we might put a couple of little tiny flea bite stitches in there to um, uh, fix that. And we really did need it, need in the earlier stage to do a little tiny adjustment to um, the shoulder. Um, we didn't have that on the first one, but um, you know sometimes it, it happens. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to apply the trim to the sleeve. And what I did here, I, I, um, I kind of measured. I had this already cut, but uh, what you need to do is measure around. You're finished. You're finished, yes. And um, depending on how much you have, then you're going to add um, a quarter of an inch. For your fold over. For your fold over, okay. So here we go. Here we go. I have um, uh, uh, like a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more, mm -hmm. which is fine. Okay, I'm gonna face these two sides like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew these together, okay? About a quarter of an inch.
And this is a really great technique to use for trim like this because it, it really makes it very simple where some, you, some applications of trim like this, you know, a cuff or um, a faux cuff, they, they're so over, over complicated. And this is actually a very easy little technique. We probably okay. should press that out, don't you think? Yeah, we should do that. But before I do that, before we cut the excess, I'm gonna, you just try have it. to try it. Fold the bottom of the, the sleeve like so. And just, I'm um, gonna flip this out. And I'm, I'm just gonna make sure uh, this is the right size. You, we, don't, we don't want any gathers. We want this to be very, um, yeah, and I, I that's, I, great. I, that's it. Okay. Okay. Let's press it, and then we I'm will. I'm gonna see. trim a little bit of the excess. Yeah. Just a smidge. Just and this is this is quite a bit of layers of fabric. Another use for the pointer. It's got multiple users, users, uses, I'm sorry. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so okay. you trimmed it, you snipped the corner so we don't have the bulk. Yeah, that way so, they're not sticking okay. out. Okay, we have it. And this is going, the thickest, um, um, side of, well, the, um, I call it the top, right? It's the top. As the that top is, is going to go towards the top, okay? Yeah. And we're, you, you can do it any way you like, but that's how it's done on the ritual. So that's why we're doing it that I'm going to bring the seam, seam to seam, seam from to underneath seam. the sleeve, okay? And I'm just, uh, I can, I'm going to pin it, but I'm not, I'm not going to, I could pin it just so that it stays in place, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to, um, Attach it. Attach it, okay? Because you don't really need to. No, uh, we don't need to pin it. No. I mean, that's really the only place it needs to be sewn, is right, th right there. I don't think it needs anywhere else. Just at the edge. So you're going down into the, the, the ditch of the... Yes. Where it's not really going to be seen. Where the stitches are not going to be seen. And you're just going through the fabric and you're not going all the way into the armhole, are you? Or the sleeve? Mm, not really. We don't really like to do that because when we are dressing the doll, the, you know, those big stitches get stuck in the, uh, in the fingers and it's a big become a little bit of wrestle. All right, well, we're going to get this sewn on and we will be back. So we're back and we're, we're trimming the top. So you can see that it's basically you're going right into the ditch of the trim and that way it's not going to show in any way. So I'm going to get in there as close as I can. Almost got it. We're done. And then we'll move on to the new thing. So you can see, you just go right into that little groove. I think groove is better than ditch. Um, so we'll go right into the groove. So we've almost got this done, and then we will move on to the next thing. We're having a nice quiet day today here because the bulldogs are all exhausted. So they're they're okay with being in the back and not having their little tantrums. And you know this is this is you're going through quite a bit of fabric. Um, to do this. Yeah, you need a, um, a bigger needle. 
Yes. What size are you using now? I have no idea what size this is, but uh, it's, it's, a long one. it's a long one and thicker one. So, yeah, it's for it's for this. Um, I think most people have a selection of needles. See, I use the little ones because they're so sharp. So I don't have a little one like size 11 straw needle works fine, but um. I'm using this needle because I, it's my favorite. I know. And once it breaks, then I guess this is the last one I have, so no more. Where did we get those? No clue, that, uh, Michael. They uh, they were uh, up there. Oh, these may be oldies. This this is uh, an old. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we may have more of those. So. And we could get. Um, we might have more just in our little stash. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna just show you again, this drives me crazy, but you know what? I didn't do my really fitting and it's there. So that's why it's important to really, really fit it. Got a little saggy. So we're there and we will be back and show you the next step. So we're back and we've got all the trim on and it's looking very, very nice. Um, and then I was griping about our uh, shoulder seam and then the little Mr. Genius went in and he just within a, a second and a half straightened that all out. So I'm happy now and uh, you know, it, it's, it's past the quality controlling test. So now we're gonna do the next thing, which is, what do you feel like doing next? I think we should do the pocket. Uh, I think so. Yeah, we can do pocket? that. Okay, yes. so we're gonna do the pocket. And this is a pocket that's an exterior decorative pocket, but it's also functional. So what we are going to do it is actually a fan pocket. So it is positioned on the gown in a way that it's out of the line of the dress off to the side. So imagine if you put your hand behind your back, that's almost where this pocket would be. So it's two-tone, it's the file, and it is the uh, remember, remember Me coral. Yes, coral, coral and fire. Okay, I'm going out. Okay, so we're gonna do our sewing. I'm gonna leave an opening. I'm gonna start from here. You can uh, you can start from any side you want. But we're gonna start on the side, the not side. the top, because we want that top to be gorgeous. I'm gonna leave about two inches. For turn around. For turn around. Turn, uh, turn out. Yeah. So I'm gonna start from here all the way around and finish there. And then uh, I know that some of you had questions about our pins. And one of the things, these, these are not the greatest pins, but we like them because they're short. Uh, a lot of the, the fine sewing pins are very, very long and they're too long for adult clothes. Yes, correct. So, um, and believe it or not, these little cheapo shorties they're hard to get. They are. They really are. They're an inch and one sixteenth of um, of an inch. Yeah. So and they're, they're just perfect a, for um, doll projects. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of them I've had for for decades, but you know we start off with thousands, but then they they get back to the back. Of the day. So what are you doing? Stitch wise? I'm doing um, ten inches. Ten stitches. Ten per stitches inch. per inch, and I'm doing. An eighth, um, an eighth of a seam allowance. So re remember that it's an eighth of a seam allowance on the, the pocket. Here, I'm making big stitches. Sorry. But if you did, you know, if you did this, at, if you use the quarter of an inch, it would be okay too, because this is all going to get gathered in. 
And if you see it, it really is like the shape of a fan. All right, so okay. now we're going to just turn it inside out. You can do a little clipping. Yeah, we got to clean that up a bit. Oops. I'm sorry, people. Sometimes I get engrossed in what we're doing, and my eyes are looking at the project, and it should be through the camera. There we go. Clip the corners. Gently turn inside out. And then he's just got his trusty little tool that he's going to use there to get it all. Maybe a little more. I want to get this corner a little as sharp as possible. Yeah. A little, little sharp point would be good. And I'm folding this file with my fingers. I want to pin it. I'm gonna do the same with the um, with the coral. Okay. All right. Now we just have to serve that up. So we'll get that sewn up and we will be back. So we've got the pocket sewn down. Uh, this is, um, or sewn closed. This is placed with the, 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 you can do whatever you like, but the original um, ensemble had the color uh, was on the exterior. So the interior will be the file and the exterior will be the coral satin. So we're pressing that nice and good. Now we are going to gather it. Because this would, it would be totally out of scale and be humongous. So we've got to gather this up. Sometimes these pockets are pleated. Yeah, and that could be a really pretty little way to do it too almost pleated like a fan. Okay. 
I'm going to mark my uh, starting point right there, and that's um, half three. A, half an inch? Or, uh, no. no, it's three-eighths. Yeah. Okay. And three-eighths from the other side. That's where I'm going to stop. And I'm going to come down like half an inch from the, uh, right. from the top to there. And I'm just going to eyeball this uh, uh, stitching, okay? Yeah, you don't have to do lines or anything. And we want, we kind of want the same concept of the, a little bit of a fold over where they're getting a peak of the ecru, like they, uh, like we have on the, uh, the back, the back bustle. So you're just doing a little simple little running stitch with a double thread. I'm gonna do two lanes. I'm gonna come and do another one uh, from uh, at the bottom. Okay. That way we get better um, better yeah. gathers, and mm -hmm. since this fire is very sturdy, it'll be a good idea. I think it needs that. I'm sorry, there will be a little noise in the room, but I think we we uh, we worked as long as we could in peace without the bulldogs being in here, but they were. Starting a revolt. Okay, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to leave a long string, okay? Of course, if you have two needles, you don't have to do that, but since we only have one good needle. I guess this is the time we take a break. We'll be back. So, I'm sorry people. I, uh, Jose just gave a great talk on how to do this and I was fascinated and I forgot to push the, the play button. So, would you explain to them what you just did? Well, what I just did was leaving uh, long, this long strings on the back. I grabbed all those strings together and went ahead and I pulled this, okay. fold it, pull it, and um, giving me about two inches and a half wow, long. Okay, and the one at the bottom, I did three quarters of an inch from this point up. I did a running stitch, and I went ahead and pulled it as well. Or I guess we should call this technically a gathering stitch. Gathering. But, it, but running stitch, same, same concept. So we're, we're, we're now we're going to place, place it. So we did some measurements, and here's, here's, here's the thing where it goes. It just goes at the top of the basically the placket. To, for the opening, so it goes right at that top. And it kind of goes over the swag to the back. But honestly, you can, you can put this where you like on your design. And it's and it's okay if the you know the alternate color shows through a little bit because we're going to actually try to train the top little uh, gather oh, sorry, top to here. fold over so we get a little bit of the contrast of the the coral and the ecru. I guess the tip, this could have been a little more gather. I'm, I'm gonna just... You're gonna just... I'm, I'm just, just gonna go ahead and do it. On, yes, I on it. We have the technology to do it. So we're back and we're just finishing that up. And you know, this is the thing that, you know, if you don't get it just the way you want, go in and just do it the way you want, get it just perfect.
better decide to do this now than after it's all sewn off. And you have to take it out and redo it, but we have been known here to take things out and redo them a time or two. Okay. Position. That's looking really good. I think we need to put, yeah. Pull it a little more in the fan shape. All right, I'm, I'm very happy with that. So now we're going to, we're gonna sew this down and then we're gonna be back and then we're gonna start getting to the fun part is all of our decorations. Okay. So the pocket is now installed it's looking lovely uh, we you you should definitely do the little fold down it just gives that nice little contrast so we are next going to work on our might as well do the um, the pocket uh, I don't know what we call these things. I'm so tired. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> we're going to do the uh, bows for... Bows, that's bows. what they're called. They're bows. So this is the, here's the, and it's marked, isn't that clever? It's marked pocket bow. So we're going to work on the pocket bow. And you can see that this is, this has a line in it. And there's a reason for that. So you're going to need to follow that. But first, we've got to encase the pocket bow. Are we doing the fringe first? Well, how, do you want to do the fringe first, or should we sew it and then do the fringe? Uh, I, I, think I would sew it and then do the fringe. Okay. Okay, so on this basso bowl, we need to cut three in either color you choose, either uh, the salmon or the blue. Okay. No, it should be in the, yeah, it should, what, uh, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be in the color. It'll be yeah. in the color of two choice. So we're just going to get all these, we're going to get all these pieces cut out. So, um, and they are clearly marked, cut one, cut some, um, uh, so even though technically in the fabric uh, selections that you're getting if you bought them from us, you have enough to do two, but you're only gonna cut one, and that will be your, uh, those little extra pieces will be your emergency pieces. So we're gonna get all these cut out, and then we're gonna sew them, and we will be back. So we're back, and we are now sewing up all of the, the bows and streamers. And we are sewing one end closed, and we're leaving one end open. And it looks like we're doing an eighth of an inch seam allowance on these pieces. So we've got quite a bit of sewing to do here. So we will do that and come back. And I had someone ask a question on one of the videos, why are the pin, why, does, uh, why do you use your pins on, on, a, on a slant? And you can see the reason why it just makes it easier to pull them out when you're doing this kind of work. So we're going to sew all these. It's the um, sewing over the pins is the substitution of uh, basting. Right. Right. And uh, at an angle, it's just easier to, easier pull, to them pull them out. out. Yeah. I'm going to leave about half an inch. On the end. On the you, end. We should do a little back step, stitch there. Just to, and that's being left because we have to be able to do fringing. Fringing. So we're going to sew like mad and get these all ready. And then we get to have the fun part. We're back. And right now we're working on all of our back got our pocket in so the next step that we're going to do are all our back bows and our streamers now we had a little we had a little confusion here which i would um, recommend that you not do we printed out uh, all of our patterns because as we've been working on the bigger size we've also been doing the smaller 
and we got our pattern pieces mixed up. So we had a little confusion, but we have straightened it out. So now Jose is sewing up all of our back pieces. And he's doing them about a, you're doing that about at a, an, eighth. an eighth of an inch. So we're sewing these up at an eighth of an inch. Does not say that on your pattern piece, but do follow this. So we're getting them all sewn up. Some we're leaving one end open and some we're closing, which this is one that we're, we're closing this one, isn't it? No. No, um, okay, we're not. I leave an inch um, without sewing yes. on some of them. So we're, so we'll explain that. Yeah, because there's a reason that you're gonna do that. So you're gonna do it just like that so that there's an inch of no sewing at the, um, at the edge we're going to do some fun stuff with that in a minute. And we've done that with, well, the, well, this, no, this one we didn't. So it's just going to be the, the ones that are going to have fringed edges. And you'll find out in a minute how we're going to do that. So we're going to get these all sewn up and we'll be back. We're back and now we're sewing the pocket bow and it will say clearly on your uh, pattern piece that it's the pocket bow. And that would be a good inch and a quarter on, on the edge, not sewn up. And what I mean by this is this is this this both ends. So both ends are not going to go all the way to the end sewing. So that's sewn up and then we will do that. So we're back and now we're going to show you, these are the back bows that we're going to show you first turning. Um, first, you need a suture to really do this, to have this, and it's a tool that you can find in a lot of crafting things. So it's basically a suture that I've had for ever. And it's really easy. You snip in one end and you just pull and turn inside out. So we're going to, we do that first. And then we're gonna take the end that we did not sew. You can see the opening. Oh, let me get the camera back. Okay, you've got, you can see it's not sewn up and we want it that way. And now we're gonna to start to do Jose's way of fringing. So we're taking a wire brush. And do it very gently. You don't wanna um, distress the fabric. Yeah, you don't wanna distress the fabric that it's not gonna be fringed. But we, will, we can stress the fringe because we want it to come out. And look, it's just, it's really easy. And we want about a good inch of fringe in the reveal. And you just take your time. The good thing about the wire brush is that it kind of holds the fabric, fiber so you don't have a total mess all over, but you'll have some mess. Now this is a great technique that you could use in lots and lots of other applications, but one, one of the things I'll tell you about it is you probably want to fringe it before you cut it so that, because you never know what you're going to end up with once you start. So it's looking really, really good. I think that's it. That's it, okay. Yeah. And now, now we have the challenges. Let's, let's see, you did that so easy. Let's see how easy you can do it on the file. You do it from one end, from one side, and then the other side. And it's coming out beautifully. I can do this faster, but you know. I know, but everyone. I have had a gun on my forehead before, yeah. and not to do that, and uh, I'm just taking my time. Oh yeah, and, you're uh, just slow, just like molasses. Um, no, I've had people say I think that we've speeded up the um, the tape, but but you're actually really going slow for you. <laughs> you get bored when you're slow. Of course, it was so quiet here, and now that we're doing this, all the bulldogs are coming in. See how easy? And it's looking really good. Okay. And there's Annabelle. She, do you want some fringe, too? That's Annabelle. Should we fringe a scarf for you, Annabelle? She doesn't really like show business, but she's here. Okay, we got those two. 
All right, we're ready. So, so we're going to prepare our other pieces and we're gonna press those out. Shall we go ahead and do that now? Sure. Okay. And you wanna press it so that it looks, that there needs to be on one side a little bit of an over, over on one side and that'll be the inners. Correct. That's what we're doing now. So it's a couple of sixteenths of an inch or so. About. All right, I think we're ready. To, we're ready for attachment. And then we have our other pieces, and those are all cut out. We're going to go ahead and press those, and we'll be back. We've got uh, the Still pocket have bow that we have to fringe, and the side bow that we have to fringe. And we'll do those, it's the same technique. We'll, we'll press these, we'll fringe those, and then we'll, we'll be ready for application. So we'll be back. While Jose is getting the bows ready, I have uh, taken this opportunity to take our cording that we're gonna use to lace up this costume. And I've taken the ends and I've dipped them in glue. And that's something you should probably do fairly early before you want to use it because you want that glue to be nice and dry and hard and that will make it easier to go through your your um, lacing holes. Um, also while he's been busy I, I prepared the first uh, streamer bows that are going to go the streamers I guess we should really call them that are going to go down the back of the the gown and I've just gathered them um, tightly and then I'm going to sew them on top of each other together and then they'll be the first thing that we're going to place uh, once we really start getting into the bows. So we have the first streamers in place and you can see that they're sewn in here into this little fold and that is, they're the first ones to go in, and then we're gonna have more on top of that. And then ultimately when it's done, we're gonna pull this down and do a few little artistic um, loops. And of course, we're gonna put another hook up in this area so that this will all uh, be held up really nice. Right now we have just our temporary threads for, um, for the lacing, but we're gonna do that right. And then we're also gonna put another hook here. So we'll, we'll get this done and we'll show you the next step. So we are now at the point of, uh, we're doing the top bustle bow. So these pieces, it's, it's the one piece, and let me grab the uh, measuring tape, excuse me, or the measure. So what you do, is you fold it over until you have the finished edge, which is here, until it has a reveal of about two and a, two and a quarter, two and a half inches. It's not that, it's about two and a half inches. Then you pull the other end back up here, and this is the raw edge. And then these are gonna be all sewn together and gathered. And that is gonna fit up again, and these two will be sewn, two pieces will be sewn together. And then that's going to fit under that little tab. So I'm gonna sew that up and we will be back to show you uh, how it looks. So we've got our streamers are on. Now we're going to attach the top bow. And we're, you know, this is not, you, you have to have your Wheaties to get this on because this is a lot of layers of fabric. So we're going to attach it right at the top of the streamers. And we're gonna go through to the other side. And it's tough, isn't it? Uh, well, there's a few layers of fabric. Yeah, so you gotta be strong. So we're gonna pull that up in there. And you don't have to worry about, oh, how how pretty it looks because the, the uh, fold is gonna come down and go cover it. 
I have the threads. I started from here, from the back of the bow. I stick the needle through underneath here. Came come around. Come around and then grab the other end of the, of the uh, bow. Because we want it on fairly tightly, but we don't have to over. It's looking good. Okay. So we'll tie it off and then and then we're going to once we get it tied off, then we're gonna fluff out those those pleats so that it makes a nice showing. We haven't put the hooks in yet, and we have the uh, lacing just in a temporary position. So we still have a little bit of fiddly fitting to go. And because of the weight of the train, I think we're gonna put a center hook into the, uh, into the back train. We didn't intend on that, but we're gonna do that. All right. I'm gonna pin this in place just so that we have an idea of how where it's gonna go. Okay. And then we're gonna just do a few little a few little stitches just to hold it so that it doesn't to get it out of that accordion look to have it look a little more have a little more je ne sais quoi. That's what we're gonna do. I just broke. Oh, never mind. That was your needle. That's my needle. Like Did you one. break my needle? Oh no, no, sorry. It's so tiny that it looks like it's broken. I know it. You know, oh. but, um, I can't work with Jose's needles, and he can't work with mine. Mine are little killers. They're little tinies, and they're sharp as. I mean, we've got some DNA left on this dress. And this, this is something we're doing now. You can do it any way you like, whatever, whatever you think looks elegant, just do it. There's no wrong way. But do this early in the day because you gotta have your strength for it. That's looking, that looks great. Okay. So we'll just tie it off and then we're, we're, we'll be on to the next thing. So we're back. We have done the pocket bow, which is this bow that goes right under the tip of the pocket. And then we've done the side bow. So now we're gonna do the other side bow and we're gonna show you how we go about doing that. So, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what I did here, I fold this in half, but not all the way down on the top side. So you're leaving about an inch and a half there? I'm leaving about half an inch, just the size of the... Um, you're letting the fringe... Le letting the fringe... Lay on top of each other. Right. Right, tip, tip top to tip. Tip top. And then I'm leaving a four inch allowance here, and I did some running stitch, and I gathered that. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, that's folded like so. And I'm gonna do another running stitch. On your center. On the center. You open this like so. And these decorations, there's not a wrong way to do this. You can do it however you think is pretty. So you're gonna and I'm just going to knot it out right here. Okay. All right, and so it's going to look like, like, like so. And I'm going to do the same with my thread, my needle and the thread right here, mm -hmm. right on the center. Nice. 
and then you kind of make a puff uh, right here at the at the top. Okay. All right. And then we're we're going to attach it on to the garment and the original garment didn't have a bow here. Let me just get it over a little bit more right on this side. And then we noticed that there were sew holes here and, and on the opposite side there were remnants of thread. So we know that there was a decoration there. And that's why we've added this to the garment. So we're gonna put that on and I'll come over here so you, you don't have you, to. You can stay there, Michael, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do it right there. You're gonna do it there, okay. Mm -hmm. We're just learning as we go. We're just figuring out how to do these angles with the camera. And sometimes we want the camera to do things it doesn't do. Okay. I'm um, sticking my needle right here at the uh, beginning of this opening. And I'm just gonna tie it on. And of course I started the wrong way. Sorry, let me start again. Everybody's so delighted that you've made a mistake. Oh. It's, it's made their day. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> There's no crime. I'll promise I'll make some more, okay? Yeah. Um. Okay, again, the same. And then from there, I'm gonna go back. Yeah, get it on nice and tight. One more knot. Yeah, we don't want that bow going anywhere. Okay. And we'll let it settle, and then we're going to go back in, and we're going to, we're going to, our last thing is going to go over, we'll go over the garment, and tack things in place that they need to be tacked. But I think that's looking very, very lovely. So we're back, we've got all of our side bows uh, complete. We're very happy with it. Um, we've, we've got to cut a few little fibers off here and there, but we will do that. So next we're gonna go on to the corsage bow. This is not in your pattern pieces, so you have to follow the directions from this video. Um, because, you know, there was just so many pieces that we didn't wanna scare people. So you, you cut off a piece that's seven and a half inches long, and it's two inches wide, okay? And then it is, the seam allowance is one eighth of an inch. So at the top, go just a little bit over an inch and an eighth or so. Just a little, yeah, a little there, perfect. Okay, we're gonna take that there and we're gonna fold that over. Okay, once we folded that over, then we're gonna do a very tight running stitch. We're gonna do a tight running stitch. It's not gonna show, so you can get rough. I'm sorry about the snoring. It's, this, this sewing workshop's boring the bulldogs. Okay, so let's see how that's looking. I usually wrap a couple of threads around it a few times just to get it nice and tight. Just wrap it. Of course, Jose's doing it, so we'll do it his way. Um, then, we're gonna take it and fold it up, and you're gonna fold just about a little over an inch, and you're gonna have that coming up over the fold of the top of the bow. Now we're gonna wrap it, it makes more sense. And then we're gonna sew this together. 
So we've got that, now we've got this big top, and then what we're going to do is find the center, and then we're going to gather that up. And we're gathering it through the middle, so don't try to pick up either side. You're just run, doing a little running stitch through the middle. Okay, and then we pull that up through the top, all right. And again, we need to wrap that, Jose. So we've got to get that nice and wrapped tight. Okay. So let's see how it looks at the little bottom pieces. Please let me knock this out. Yeah. Okay, that's looking very nice. Mm -hmm. So show show us the show it from the right up front okay. okay this is from this is what it looks on the back okay. okay i'm gonna grab this piece i'm gonna twist it and it's important to twist it to get that nice genesis twist oh, as you go okay. okay and let's I'm check it from the front before we okay so let's make sure make sure i like it because if i don't like it what will i tell you um. It's so many phrases, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember any. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. <laughs> nice and twisted. See. You can see that's gorgeous. Okay, we have the thread. I did a little fold over here, just so that it's a nice finish. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna proceed to finish it off with some stitches. I mean, those are the view that like written directions. This is real. This would be really hard to to uh, write down on paper. Okay, could you hold it just up there? Okay, and this is absolutely what the original had. Uh, the top can we can we kind of fan the top out a little bit more just by pulling it? Just a little pull, just a smidgey. Okay. It's a little. Okay, now let's have a look. And if you can hold it upright. And this is what you have to do. You just have to work with it that is gorgeous. So that's perfect. So now we have to apply the bow. So the bow is we're getting we're getting towards the So we're going to put the bow on this side and it's going to go right over that miter. Monte is fittings are no big deal for her. She's had a gazillion of them. Of course, this would be easier to do when it's not on the doll, but. I think that's a very good placement. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to sew it on. Um when so. she's wearing it, when she's wearing the dress, so uh, that's what it would look well, like. Well, we're we're gonna do this, and we'll we'll take it off and get it get it on, sew this on properly, and then while we're doing that, the next step step we're gonna do 
is we're going to sew this on properly. Then if you can turn it around, Jose, so that I can see the back. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put her lacing in, and I think our lacing is cured enough that we can lace her up. Then we're gonna apply our hook here, and we're gonna put a hook in the center back just to give some support to the soft bustle. And then we're gonna put one hook at the top of the uh, bodice. So we're, when we've done that, we are done with this project as far as the gown goes. So we will do that and we will be back. So we're back and we're, we're at the point now that we're going to do the, oh, well, we've got, we've got Lou here. We've got to keep Lou away from that dress. Not that he would hurt it, but uh, we're back to the point of now we, we have to do our three hooks. Lou, come on. No. Um, and so your kit is going to come with the three hooks and the loop, the metal loop, but we like to do our fabric loops. So I thought that we'd have Jose show you how to do that. I know we've showed it in other videos, but some of you may not have seen those. So let's sh show them how you do this. Okay. Put one there and put one here. I'm going to do the, clo uh, the closure one over here. Since I already have the hook that goes to there, so I'm going, that, I'm going to put that in place just to align this perfectly, okay? Um, I need a pin. It lays on, on, on top. The closure oh, lays mm -hmm. straight like that. Okay, okay? Gotcha. So I'm going to mark where I want to put the, um, where I want to make the, uh, the loop. Okay. Right, okay? So I have the pin sitting there. I have it there. I'm just going to go like so. I'm not sure you're going back, but uh, uh, an eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch. I'm going to make a second, a second one. I'm going all the way through, doing a stab stitch. Hold the thread like that. The first stitch, you are going to graft the fabric. Saw through the fabric. That's you the just first. Just made a knot. I just made a knot. I'm gonna continue making knots, but I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, grab the thread. Okay, not the fabric. Pull up. It's very easy, but a lot of people do not know how to make this. Okay, that's the last one. So I'm gonna go through the fabric. And I'm gonna go ahead and knot this out on the back. And that's all there is to it, folks. So we are, next time we see you, this will be all laced up. It'll be all hooked in, and then we'll be ready to move on the next step, final, final step, which is the shoes. So we'll be back. All right, so we are back and we are going to work on one of the last things that we have to do with the gown, and that is the dress weights. So Jose, we want to tell them the, the, everybody wants to know what you use for the dress weights. Okay, we're using now a quarter. Go to your piggy saving bank and grab a quarter. <laughs> Or two. <laughs> or two. You need four, actually. So, you need a dollar uh, yeah. in quarters. Okay. <laughs> so and everybody then, has, a, I mean, a, people have been wondering, where do we get them? Where do we find them? It's just a quarter. And uh, I just randomly pulled them out of the cash register here. There's one from 1965. So it's an oldie. So 
<laughs> and then you're gonna need, from this uh, thin silk, you're gonna need to cut four pieces of two and a half by two and a half. But this is just a scrap out of your kit. You can use the silk, you could use the, the peach, you could use, you just have to scrounge it out. Yeah, it's whatever, whatever your choice. There. Yeah, there's no, there's no pattern piece for this. You just have to do that. Then you place the quarter on the center of this um, square fabric. You grab all the corners. Okay, I have grabbed all the corners. Like a, dump, a Chinese dumpling. Like you're going to wrap the quarter in the silk. And then once you grab the four corners, you're going to twist it around until you see this on the front. Nicely, uh, yes, hold it. You work, you work, have to have a, a threaded needle for that already. And the double. Twist it around several times, okay? And then just proceed to finish it off with a knot or two, probably three. And I mean, we've, we've pre-made these, but you could probably make it and then save a step by just right away applying it to where, where we're gonna show you that we think it needs to be. Now, this little tail, you're going to clip there. That's it. That's it. Very simple. Just like they did in the 19th century, except they used uh, almost like little plumber plugs. Uh, but the problem with those plumber plugs, and we could go up to the hardware store and get them, they uh, corrode. So the the nickel uh, in a in a quarter won't corrode. So this will stay. Um, that's why we're using a quarter. You could you could use a dime if you're doing the smaller um, kit, but you probably would put want to put two dimes in, yeah. or even a nickel for the smaller size. A nickel size. will be yes. Yeah, for mm -hmm. the smaller size. Okay, now we're going to place them. So Lillian has got her costume on. It's laced up. It's hooked up. You know, this is where we really can see where we need the weight. So what we're gonna do is tell them the placement. About right here. Okay, yeah. so those are the center tabs. Um, you can either um, choose this pointy a tab or you can choose up. this one. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, let's see, I'm going to go right, right about here from underneath, from the inside. Okay. And we're doing up high enough that she's not going to be kicking into it when she's walking. But you want to, to however you place these, you want them to be fairly even so that that way the pull down um, Okay, we'll be gonna... even. You know, and uh, we've deconstructed thousands of antique garments that, you know, were basically ruined. And you learn a lot about how they constructed by, by deconstructing. And weights were just commonly used. It's a little tricky to sell it, but we, we'll get it. And he's sewing in right now into the interfacing. Yeah, making sure you don't get the stitches uh, on the front. Yeah, because if you do, you, we, we t we'll have to take them out. All right, so we, we've got that one in and, and we'll tie it off. And then we're gonna place it evenly the other evenly, but then we'll move, once this is done, we'll move on to the back where we'll show you where we think we, we want to put this. There's no rule about this. You just see how your, your gown is falling and then you can decide where you want to put it. Okay, so that's looking good. And then... Should we do the back? The yes. one on the back? Yeah, let's do the back. Okay. 
Right. Where do you think we need to do this? Okay, we have the center back right here, this tab. So I'm gonna go right here. Okay, and then you can do it on the opposite side too. Oh, we get the thrill of watching Jose. He's a sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. I close my eyes. No, you know. <laughs> I can't do that. But he has admitted that he he's going to start trying our threading machines because, um, you know, you, you may be able to do things blind, but uh, doing a needle, threading a needle, is, it gets it gets tougher as the years go by. So getting those all sewn on. I love that plunk when it hits the hits the floor. just about got that ready to tie it off. So we're gonna get all these uh, done and then we will come back and then we're gonna go, we're gonna move, we'll be moving on. So yeah, see it already is just laying down. Yeah, it gets that it little on nice. tiny, um, and, and honestly people, as many scraps as you have, if you, if you wanna put more of these weights, uh, feel, feel free to go go wild. Yeah, with it. yeah. The more weight you put in it, is the yeah. better. Maybe it's, two coins, two yeah. quarters would yeah, have that. been good. But I think though that once it kind of gravity takes, see that's nice. So uh, uh, it's a good little trick to know, and it's not a trick. It's part of 19th century dressmaking. So we will be back.